Welcome back to another how-to series with Trend Micro. My name is Michael Clifford. I'm a support engineer here at Trend Micro. So today we're going to discuss different ways of migrating agents. You've evaluated the environment, you have your office scan there, you're ready to make the step to Apex One, and maybe you're wondering how are we going to get our agents effectively over to the Apex One server since the supported migration path or recommended migration path is to set up a new Apex One server. So there, there's several different ways in which we can go about this, several different methods. And we're just going to go over the pros and cons to figure out which one's going to be best for your enterprise or organization. So the methods that we have for agent migration are listed here on the screen. So you have your web console move feature, uh, MSI, always available. Um, we have a utility called the IPX for you can alter your agent connection settings or refer to the hammer, <laughs> the common uninstall tool packaged with the MSI. So let's go over the first one of these. And as we go through them, there's going to be separate videos on each one of these features so you can actually see them in action and, you know, just take a look at how it's going to work in your environment and which one you may want to go with. So starting with the web console move feature, uh, this is probably going to be the easiest way to move your agents around. You, you can move batches of agents in a controlled manner from the console just simply by selecting the agents uh, and, and clicking move to the new server. So there, there's no third-party utility requirements here. Um, the command to move it is very lightweight bandwidth-wise. It's just another command you're sending to your agent. And once you send that, it'll cause the agent to check in in the other place. And if you have your update settings set just correctly on the agent, it won't update its hotfix. So you don't have to worry about any bandwidth impact. The, the real cons of this is that it can't move offline uh, agents or agents marked as independent agents. So those agents would have to necessarily be online for you to move them. It can't be scheduled and you can't set it to move the agents when they check in. So the, the real downside of this is that you would have to monitor your console when they come online, move them. So moving on, we have the MSI install package, your standard MSI install. And as everyone knows, you can easily script this through your third party utility, uh, through SCCM, Big Fi IBM Big Fix. PDQ, or even set up a GPO policy to deploy the MSI. If the upgrade fails with the MSI, <clears throat> the endpoint will automatically roll back and it won't leave your endpoint unprotected. So that, that's a really good pro, pro on it because if you do fail the install, you'll know your agent's still protected. You're only subjected to the parameters of MSI exec. So you can do everything you can with an MSI exec, including logging, moving those logs to a different place so you can review your installs. So it's actually a great way to, to deploy throughout your environment. The, the cons of it are kind of uh, enterprise level uh, due to your organization. Uh, if, if your security team doesn't have access to SCCM or maybe you have to engage uh, techs or anything like that to, to sneak or net around with the MSI, it may become problematic to deploy that package. Since you are transversing a package across the environment to each endpoint uh, bandwidth, you're going to have to really think about how much bandwidth you can spare in that period of time. So the package itself is about 600 megabytes with everything involved. So you're going to have to, you know, figure out best times, uh, ratios, and, and just general bandwidth of your uh, infrastructure so you don't saturate your network and cause any, any issues uh, during the migration. Uh, another con, I don't know if I consider it a con per se, but it re requires the extra step of editing the OSC scan INI. So the MSI package will bypass the checking needed to install an, uh, a major upgrade on an existing agent that's pointing at a different server. So it's a, it's a fairly quick OFC scan INI edit, but we wanted to put it in the cons field to let you know that this has to be done for the MSI to be run on these machines. The IPX for is a command line utility we have, um, comes with Office Scan, Apex One. It's been around forever. <laughs> we have a lot of KBs regarding it, a lot of uh, programmatic ways of using it. It's a very small, very lightweight command utility. Uh, it's very easily scripted. Um, all you need is the IPX for tool and the OFC uh, NT cert.dat, which allows the server cert to be put on the agents. It's the agent communication cert. So the con of this is you do have to specify the unload password in the command itself. So if you're not a fan of saving that unload password in, the, in, in a script or a file somewhere, um, it can be obfuscated through different means like using a secure string, but nonetheless, when it runs, it needs to be in clear text. So, so that, that may go against your corporate policy, or maybe you just don't want to do it that way. 
The other problematic part is it's not super difficult, but it's more difficult than other methods for large scale deployment. So you'd have to either use a third party utility, a toolbox, um, SCCM, GPO, things like that, in order to get this command to propagate across to the agents. The other part of it is there's no real error return. So if it fails to move or it doesn't move to the proper domain, you, you don't really know. It, it's not going to tell you back. It couldn't move the agent. There's not going to be a log to verify whether the agent moved or not. So you just have to take it on um, trust that either either moved or didn't move or, you know, thereby checking later on. Um, you can bypass that a little bit uh, with some scripting methods, checking registry keys and whatnot. But overall, you know, that, that's the general uh, con of that utility itself. So <clears throat> another really, really easy way is the agent connection settings. And you do this through the console. So the agents uh, connect to the server stated within that agent connection setting. And if you were to change that to a different server with a, the proper listening port, then all the agents that are checking in will move and migrate to that server. So that, that's, that's a great easy way to do it, but you don't really have control over that migration. It's every agent that checks in, gets the setting, it moves over. If you do not have your patterns or your updates set to patterns only, then as soon as they move, they're gonna get their hotfix level upgraded, their build level to the Apex One agent, and they're also gonna get any components they're missing. So the potential for impact is very, very high, both on the server and the agent. So the agents will begin upgrading and they'll begin saturating the server or their update agents. The other con of it is the old server must be online until all the endpoints have checked in. So if you're going with this method as a one way, I mean, you can mix this method with other methods and just do this at the end. That's perfectly fine. But as long as you're using this method, it has to remain online. And once all of the agents have checked in and moved, only then can you decommission the server. So our last and my favorite <laughs> way of uh, going about saturating an environment with a new agent is the common uninstall tool. So the, the common uninstall tool removes our agent, all of its settings and everything. And you start with a completely clean slate on which to install a new agent. So when you combine the cut with an MSI, which is uh, just done through very generic scripting, um, you have a very high success rate of deployment. Since you're not installing over an agent, you are actually installing a fresh agent. So it's easily deployable through third-party utilities like SCCM and BigFix. So you just package you know, your MSI with the, the cut and there's already you know, blank files and a readme in there that'll allow you to, to put those two things together and just run the cut command and it goes through and reinstalls the new agent. The con to this is it is a two-step process. It does uninstall the agent first and then installs it. So during that period of time, your agent is gonna be left vulnerable within your environment. Whether that's an acceptable risk is up to you as an organization or your enterprise to decide if you know that that gap is too much of a risk uh, to go through with this method. The other part is, since it is uninstalling the agent, if the MSI fails to install, there's nothing to roll back to. So if the MSI fails and you're left with an agent with no no security agent on it, so it's completely vulnerable until you go check on it, reinstall the agent with the MSI and figure out what's going on there. Um, the last con isn't really a con if you get to talk to me, but <laughs> you have to obtain the common uninstall tool from support. This uh, tool expires quarterly for security reasons, and we can only give it to people entitled to support uh, under our current contract. Hopefully that helps you decide on which, which method is best for your organization. Uh, if you have any questions about each one, uh, again, there's going to be a video on each of those different methods. So once you come to the conclusion, this one's going to be right for you, at least in the beginning. Go ahead and hop over to those videos, check it out, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. All right. Bye.